everyone. So here is chapter nine of Frindle Chess. Mrs. Margaret Chatham had been principal of Lincoln Elementary School for 18 years. She knew Mr. and Mrs. Allen because they had all served together on the building committee when the old Lincoln School was torn down and the new one was built six years ago. When she telephoned on the afternoon of October 1st to set up the meeting, Mrs. Chatham had asked Nick to be there too. It was 6.30 when she knocked and Nick opened the door. Good evening, Nick, she said. No smile. Hi, Mrs. Chatham. Chatham, sorry, said Nick, backing away as she filled the doorway. She was a large person, as tall as Nick's dad, with wide shoulders. Nick guessed she would play linebacker on a football team because that's what his dad had played in college. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Allen, she said, stepping into the living room. She was wearing a long black raincoat with a red silk scarf tied loosely around her neck. She kept her coat on, but took off the scarf and tucked it into her left pocket. She shook hands stiffly with both of Nick's parents before sitting down on the chair to the left of the couch. Nick's mom and dad sat on the couch, and Nick sat on the rocking chair that faced Mrs. Chatham across the low coffee table. This is not an easy visit for me. We are having some trouble at school, and it appears that Nick is in the middle of it. Then, while Nick's parents listened, Mrs. Chatham laid out the story as she, was, as she saw it, Nick encouraging the other kids to use his new word, Mrs. Granger forbidding it, and ruined fifth grade class picture, the ruined fifth grade class picture, hundreds of kids staying after school, and a general feeling that there was a rebellion at school, with no one respecting the rules anymore. Nick watched his mom and dad while Mrs. Chatham talked, looking from one face to, to another. Here's the illustration. Oops. The caption said, the game is not over. His dad was listening carefully, nodding and frowning. He looked embarrassed about the trouble, but his mom looked kind of annoyed. And when Mrs. Chatham finished her story, Nick's mom was the first one to speak. But doesn't all this seem like a lot of fuss about something pretty silly? Nick sat quietly, but his mind was shouting, hooray for mom, hooray for mothers everywhere. His mom wasn't annoyed with him. She was annoyed with Mrs. Granger, maybe even annoyed with Miss Chatham. This was getting interesting. Mrs. Allen was still talking to the Mrs. Allen was still talking to the principal. I mean, is there really any harm in the children making up a funny word and saying it? Does there have to be a rule that a word like this may not be used? Mrs. Chatham sighed and said, "Yes, I suppose it does seem silly, but Mrs. Granger thinks that it is that it's rather like keeping children from saying ain't. There have there have to be standards." That's why we have dictionaries. And really, the problem isn't so much the word itself, it's the lack of respect for authority. Mr. Allen said, Mrs. Granger's right about that. There have to be standards. We can't have kids walking around saying ain't, can we? And that's when Nick piped in. You know that big dictionary in Mrs. Granger's room? The word ain't is right there in the book. It look, I looked it up and there it was. I don't see why I can't use a word if it's in the dictionary. Mrs. Granger even said that her big dictionary was the law. Nick looked from face to face to face. That stumped them all. He had just launched a first class thought grenade. Well, yes, but well, as I said, the word ain't and even the word frindle, these are not real. the real issue here, said Mrs. Chatham. Mrs. Allen said, well, I think the real issue is Mrs. Granger's reaction to a harmless little experiment with language. It's an overreaction. Don't you think so, Tom? Mrs. Allen looked at her husband. It was Mr. Allen's turn to look from face to face to face. He was lost. Yes, well, sure, I, I guess so. I mean, it's not like anybody's been hurt. Um, I mean, it's not like vandalism or stealing or something like that. His sentence trailed off and he rubbed his chin and stared thoughtfully through the window on the wall behind Mrs. Chatham. And while the three grown-ups sat there in an uncomfortable moment of silence, Nick had a sudden vision of what was really going on here. It was a chess game. Nick against Mrs. Granger. Mrs. Granger had just tried to end the game by using her queen, Mrs. Chatham, in her black raincoat and black the black queen. Nick didn't know it until the attack was underway, but he had a powerful defender of his own, good old mom, the white queen. And the game was not over. It would go on until there was a winner and a loser. Mrs. Chatham didn't, say, didn't stay much longer. 
There was a little more talk back and forth across the chessboard about how children have a right to explore new ideas, about the importance of respecting teachers and the work they do, about everybody needing to keep up standards and make school a safe place to learn. Then Mr. Allen offered Mrs. Chatham some coffee and banana bread, but she said, no thanks, I really must be going now. She thanked Nick's parents and they thanked her. Nick opened the door and said, good night, Mrs. Chatham. Then the Black Queen put on her red scarf and walked off into the October twilight. Nick, I think we better talk a little more about this, said his mom, sitting back down on the couch. If I find out that you have been disrespectful to Mrs. Granger or any other teacher at school, then you really will be in big trouble. I haven't been disrespectful, honest. I did get everybody started using the word, but like, but like you said, it's not hurting anybody. And I'm sorry if me and Dave and Pete got everybody to ask Mrs. Granger to borrow a frindle. That was mean, I guess, but she started it by making kids stay after school and write a hundred sentences just for saying my word once. All the kids like to use my word. It's just fun, that's all. Well, said Nick's dad, if it gets everyone upset and makes the principal come talk to your mother and me, then it must not be fun for everybody, is it? And I think you should just tell all your friends to knock it off right now. I mean, tomorrow. Nick shook his head. I can't, Dad, it won't work. It's a real word now. It, <clears throat> it used to be just mine, but not anymore. If I knew how to stop it, I think I probably would, but I can't. And Nick looked at both of their faces to see if that idea was sinking in. It was. Like I said, I won't be disrespectful, but I do like my word. And I guess now we're just going to have to see what happens. And the chessmen, Nick's king and queen, had to agree. The game would go on. And that's the end of chapter nine.